Hello everyone, this is Victor Mama from Excel Moments. And indeed, it's been a moment, but it's good to be back. So what do I have for you in today's video? Uh, this is a question I saw on one of the online forums. I uh, did post a solution there and I thought to share it with everyone. Okay, so what's the problem statement? So the OP has a couple of numbers. Well, much more numbers than I have here. Here I just have uh, 30 of them, okay? And he wants to group those numbers into different buckets. So like you see here, 0 to 99, 100 to 199, 300 to 399, so on. So he wants to have all the numbers that fall into that bucket listed just like this. Okay, it will be good to make it dynamic also in a sense that uh, if this changes from maybe 0 to 99 to 0 to 199 and so on, formula is able to adjust accordingly and give you the appropriate entries okay so that's really it and it's simple so prior to now say pre office 365 i would have solved it with something that looks like this quite a lengthy formula okay but with dynamic arrays and with you know filter function this should be much easier not too short, but much shorter than that. Okay, so I'm just going to explain my logic, which I think is simple, and I'll make it as clear as possible so you understand what we want to do. So essentially, the logic is this. For a number to fall into this bucket, it needs to satisfy two criteria. Both of them need to be satisfied. First one is that the number needs to be greater than or equals to zero, and that same number needs to be less than or equals to 99. Take that again. The number needs to be greater than or equals to zero, and less than or equals to 99. And the same thing would apply across both. Okay? So once any number here meets that criteria, it falls into the appropriate bucket. That's it. It's that simple. Okay, so but before I start, what I want to do is I want to create a named range for this range here just to make the formula easy on the eye. The best thing will be to make a table so that it's dynamic, but I know people can have, you know, issues with the structure of, um, you know, table references and, you know, formulas uh, referencing cells in tables. So I'm just going to create a simple range, you know, just for ease of explanation. So from row A to cell A to rather, I do control shift down. I select the list box, uh, name box rather, <laughs> the name box. And I, because I want to call it list, that's why I call it list box. So I call it list. Okay. So what that just means is that when I select from A to all the way down, it shows you list there. So I'm going to use list in my formula, okay? Rather than saying A2 to A30 and so on. So I would use the filter function as you already know. And what am I filtering? I'm filtering on my list, okay? So I'm going to filter on my list. But the important thing now is to know what's the criteria, which of these elements in the list fits you know the criteria. If it does fit, then you know it should show up. So what's the first thing? Like we said, the number needs to be greater than or equals to zero in this case. So the number is lists. I'm checking the numbers in lists. I'm checking is it greater than or equals to. I need to be able to extract zero from that cell. It's very simple. I know there's a hyphen, and anything before the hyphen is the number I'm interested in. And that's the same logic across. So I just need to find the position of the hyphen, pick everything from the left to one before the position of the hyphen. Okay. So if the position of the hyphen is three, then I pick from the left everything up to character two. So how do I find the position of the hyphen? I can use search, I can use find, but because this has nothing to do with case, I can use any of them. So I'm going to use search. I'm going to search for a hyphen in here. Now I'm going to make this range, um, you know, the reference mixed because I want it to be able to move across, so from C to D, right, and to E, but it must always reference what row one, because the headers are in row one. So this is what I'm going to do here. Huh? So we can evaluate this portion, press F9, in my case, function F9, you see two. So it tells you that the hyphen is in position two. So what do we need to do now? It means we need to pick from the left of this cell, use the same reference, okay? And you pick, this is going to give you 2. So what you need is to pick what 2 minus 1 so that you don't include the hyphen in there. Right? So this will give us 0. Let's evaluate this portion. You see 0, but what you notice is in double quotes, meaning that it's text. 
So if you do this comparison, it's not going to give you what you want. So what you need to do is to convert this to a number. Easy way for me is to just add zero. Okay. And now you notice that it's no more true in double quotes, but what? Sorry, what did I do there? Yes, sorry. Rather than zero in double quotes, it's just zero. Yeah, <laughs> kind of feels like I'm a little distracted. <laughs> okay, so that's the first criteria. Then we need to check the second one. The second one is that the same list, the numbers in there are less than or equals to what? In this case, 99, which is just the numbers to the right of the hyphen. There are so many ways to get in this. You could use the right function with the len. You could use um, substitute. You could use replace. So it all depends. Maybe I just use right. Some people are more used to that, but I could have used any of the others. So I'm just going to do right. And I'm going to pick from this cell, right? Okay. And what, how many characters am I going to pick? I'm just going to look at the length of the string, less the position of that hyphen. So if these are four characters and the hyphen is in position two, then I need four minus two characters, which is two. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to find the length of this. I can break this down in some other video. Less the position of the hyphen. I already know how to get that, but I'm just going to repeat it. Search for the hyphen. In this cell here, okay, make sure your references are consistent. If you do this, one more bracket, you've closed the right. But this is also going to give you a string. It's going to give you 99 as a string. So you need to add zero in there, okay, so that you can have 99 as a number. One bracket should close everything in the filter. That's in the filter criteria include. And one more bracket, and you should close the filter itself. Hopefully, if I've written everything well, this should work. Let's press enter. Okay, looks like it's doing what it needs to do. Copy across these three. Control V. Okay, and you see it's um, split it as we expected. So what we are just going to test is if I change the ranges. Let's say I make this 0 to 150. I make this 151 to 300. I make this uh, 301 to 350, and I make this 351 to 399. Let's see if our numbers are right. Okay, so you see everything adjusts accordingly. So using the filter function, combining it with, you know, left, right, search. Is there any other function? I think, yeah, that's all. You are able to achieve this. And if the numbers change, you can also adjust, you know, accordingly. If I was using a table or using a dynamic range, then that makes it easier. So if you add more numbers, you know, it would also update. But I decided not to show that in this video. Once you can do this, then you can always build on this, you know, to make it more dynamic. Okay, so I just thought to share this as um, maybe my welcome gift after a little hiatus. Okay, so if you like this video, you can hit you know, the like button. And it's also cool to subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. Like I always say, that's not going to change. If you can think it, Excel most likely can do it. If you have other options as to how we can solve this, you could put them in the comment section. Okay, I'll be looking forward to that. I'm out.